<clears throat> Good morning. I'm uh, starting the video a few minutes early uh, just to give people time to get on and and we'll get started at, at exactly 1030. Um, but good morning, man. It's a, uh, I would say it's good to see everybody, but I can't see nothing but myself, but, um, I'm sure y'all are doing well. Um, we're doing better. Uh, thank you guys for all the prayers that you've, uh, bestowed upon us during this time. Uh, we've had a rough few weeks, but, uh, but we're making it and uh, we're excited, or at least I'm excited to be coming to you live this morning uh, so we can have church. I hope you got my message yesterday curled up somewhere nice and cozy. Maybe you watching this on a phone or an iPad or, you know, got it mirrored to your TV and you got a nice hot cup of something just like I do. Mm. It's good. <clears throat> but it's just good to be able to interact with other people again. <laughs> Uh, we've been in, <clears throat> excuse me, quarantine for <clears throat> last, going on three weeks now. Um, and so it's, uh, it's getting kind of crazy in the house. I'm not exactly a hundred percent certain that one of the animals isn't going to say hello here in a few minutes. One might jump in my lap. Porky might decide he wants to chime in. So if that happens in the course of all this, just we're going to roll with it because uh, they're just as much frustrated being cooped up with us, I think, as we are them. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> but I, I do want to say thank you for all the prayers. Thank you for the those that have reached out through Facebook or or uh, through uh, text and uh, ask how we're doing. Um, we're getting better day by day. Um, it's uh, it's been a, It's been a rough, like I said, a rough few weeks. The boys haven't had any as much issue, um, um, I guess, most of you know by now. I'll just go ahead and let the let you know that uh, we did all test positive for COVID over the last few weeks, um, and uh, it's been uh, Stacy and I have had the worst part of it. Um, Stacy actually being the worst of it. Um, uh, she's still dealing with some issues. I'm I'm uh, on the weak side, uh, still having some some issues with some things. See, there they go, there they go. I didn't think it would be very long, and they would decide to say hello. Um, uh, but but we're making it, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be out of quarantine by Christmas, and uh, and everything will be good to go. Um, I do want to mention this, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this out here. I'll send out an email. I'll send out a text uh, or uh, an email. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> sorry, pigs trying to get in the presents. No porky. Um, this is going to be fun. <laughs> uh. I'll send out an email. I'll send out a text or, a, or a, a Facebook message this week. More than likely, because of the way COVID is spreading right now, uh, because more than likely we're go we're going to be being with family um, over this next weekend. Um, we're going to be having some things here and there uh, with family that uh, uh, we're probably going to extend our uh, Facebook Live. Um, service uh you know just doing service over facebook live for maybe another week um so that will put us coming back into the church in january um just because of how rapid this is spreading and a lot of the churches in our area are doing the same thing they're just they're deciding it's it's a just a good to take a, a few weeks off um in person and just try to let this thing run its course it's been amazing to find out how many people over the last several weeks have gotten COVID uh, that are testing positive. Um, and uh, it's, it's hitting our area pretty hard. So we want to do everything that we can. And if we have the technology to be able to come to you live uh, like this on Facebook, uh, then we would like to do that instead of trying to open the doors up and, and having people uh, in the actual church and, and making that risk. I mean, we, we did get lucky <clears throat> having a, positive case in the church um and luckily that it did not spread uh, thanks to our protocols and whatnot we uh we made sure that it stayed where it needed to be and and we we're lucky it didn't spread any more than it did so we're thankful for that i do want to mention by way of a few prayer requests uh continue to pray for uh 
uh, for Jessime and Luke 101. I've been keeping up with them. He sent out a message uh, last week on, on Facebook um, through Luke 101, uh, the Christmas message, and um, it was it was really sweet. So continue to pray for Jessime and his family and the Homeland Christian Church um, there in Haiti. Um, pray for uh, uh, Miss Emily. Um, she's having some issues um, right now as well with some infection. Um, and then uh, pray for, you know, our family is getting over COVID. We've got some more families uh, in the church that are that are dealing with COVID right now. And so we uh, we just pray uh, pray for their speedy recovery and and hopefully that it won't uh, get any worse than, than really what it has. So um, I know there's other prayer requests. If you have them, please text me, put them over Facebook, send them to Miss Rhonda. Uh, we'll get them out to the church. You can email her. You can text her if you have her number. You can just send it through the church's uh, Facebook page, uh, and we'll be more than happy to get those out to you. I know there's a lot of people this time of year, especially this week, uh, with it being the week of Christmas, uh, you know, that have, a, have trouble this week, that, you know, have lost a loved one, uh, that as, as families get together, they uh, they they deal with these these sort of things, and, uh, and it can be a depressing time, but uh, we just want to pray for those uh, in, in the church. Uh, uh, and, and, and I'm getting one right now. Uh, this is from Wes, a lady named Amy, uh, that she, Wes worked with passed away. So pray for her family. Um, and, the, those at Hobby Lobby, um, <clears throat> it's a horrible time. This is the, uh, a horrible time of year to lose someone. Uh, so pray for that family. Um, and like I was saying, it's just, it's one of those things where this time of year seems to magnify. Uh, when we've lost loved ones, but, uh, but, uh, but, you know, we can, we can come together and, and, uh, and, and love on each other and, and pray for those and, and, uh, inspire instead of, uh, uh, making this a depressing time, we can share love. And, and that's, that's the, that's the whole point of this time of year is to share love. So, uh, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and pray. And, and like I said, if you have prayer requests, send them through, uh, Facebook, email, text, Myself or Wes or text Ron and we'll get them out to the church. Father God, we do pray. We we do thank you so much. We pray for right now. Uh, just the 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 fact that we can come together, uh, God. The fact that there's just you know there's a few gathered together right now over technology, Lord. Uh, that where we can come together and and we can be the church, even though we're spread out uh, many miles away. Uh, Father, we're still uh, we're still the church. And God, we thank you. Uh, for the, our church family. God, I thank you personally for our church family who's done so much praying over the course of the last few weeks for us. Um, God, thank you for uh, just keeping us as safe as possible and, and thank you for allowing us to uh, just get through it as, as hard as it is. Uh, Father, you've, you've allowed us to make it through it without uh, any serious uh, repercussions from the illness, but uh, we just we just thank you that that we're able to keep going. And God, I, I can't thank you enough just to the fact that, that we're here right now. Uh, God, that we're here in your presence. And Father God, I pray for those that are that are sick, God, those that, that have COVID, those that are dealing with other illnesses. Father, that you would continue to work through those. Father, I pray for uh, those that have lost loved ones uh, during this time, God, that you would help them to, uh, to just remember the memories. Father, that remember the good times. And, and Lord, understand that if they, if their loved one knew you, there's, there's going to be a great meeting. Uh, there's, there's never going to be a time where we're not going to be with them. And God, we just thank you uh, for, for those times that we've had uh, with those loved ones. God, we thank you for this time that we're going to spend with you. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is the reason this is all possible. The reason we celebrate anything is because of Jesus Christ. And we thank you so much for that. And God, we just pray that you would bless this message this morning. We pray that you would move through it, God, in these homes, uh, through these families. God, we pray that you would move in a mighty, mighty way. We love you and we thank you. In your, your holy name we pray. Amen. God, thank you so much, guys, for for that. For just, again, I, I'm, I'm so excited just to be able to be with you uh, just during this time. So I'm excited about uh, this message this morning. So if you've got a Bible... Um, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I've got, there's three real big passages. I'm going to let Paul do a lot of preaching this morning, uh, just because the, this, the passages that, 
that we're going to talk about this morning when we finish this Love Came Down at Christmas series. Uh, we're going to talk about love this morning, but um, Ephesians, if you've if you if you've got a Bible and you want to grab a spot, Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verse 3, and, and really around chapter 2, we're going to, there's going to be a lot of scripture there, uh, but uh, just want to give you a heads up for that, but uh, but uh, but that's where we're going to be this morning. Mm. Sorry, I get fueled up. All right, <clears throat> so love came down at Christmas. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. We Wes talked about hope last week. We talked about faith the week before because uh, what really happened at Christmas was the fact that love came down, and it had to come down. And that's the most important thing we celebrate during this time is the fact that love came down at Christmas. It wasn't just God's son. It wasn't just a baby born in a manger uh, to a virgin Mary. It wasn't the fact that all those things happened. It wasn't just the fact that the prophecy is the fact that God saw fit to love us enough to send his son to be our substitute for sin. And it's that love that came down at Christmas that we celebrate this time of year. That's the most important thing we celebrate. You know, we got a tree behind us, a gorgeous tree that my wife decorated. She did an awesome job, as she does every year. And, you know, we got, there's some presents underneath the tree. And, and you know, we, we, we're we looking forward to Christmas just like everybody else. But ultimately, there's nothing about this tree that's special other than the memories that we have on it. That, that would be it. We have a special tree. It's all memories, all these ornaments on it have a, a certain place. Um, but ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, it's just a tree with little knickknacks on it. And it's got gifts underneath it, that stuff that some people need, stuff that some people want, maybe some toys, maybe some things here and there. But ultimately, it's, it's going to pass Friday. Christmas will pass. And and we'll go on to December 26th, and we'll, we'll keep moving our life along. But... The thing that makes it so different, the thing that makes Christmas for the, for the follower of Christ, for the Christian, so important is the fact that we celebrate love physically coming down from the heavens and being put on earth. And as sweet as it is to think about the baby, as sweet as it is to think about, you know, little baby Jesus in his swaddling clothes and, and the shepherds coming and the wise men bringing gifts, ultimately... The reason why he came was so he could be a sacrifice for us. And that's true love. That is true love. And as we've seen this, as Paul has talked about it, uh, we've been we've been sort of centering this whole series around uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and the love chapter. And the fact that Paul is talking about love in the context of worship to this church of Corinth. And I, I know that this is something you're like, well, how does this all fit together? True worship comes out of true love. And there's only one place where love comes from, and that's from God himself. First uh, John, God, God is love. You know, there's a, there's a chapter there in, in First John that John talks about God being, he is love. And that's where we understand love from. We may think we understand love, but we don't understand love until we understand it in the context of what God did for us through his son, Jesus Christ. So if we look at this passage again, 1 Corinthians 13, 1, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, look at that, I can do, you can do things, but if you don't have love, it's, it's a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith, so to remove mountains, but I do not love, I have nothing that all centers around love. If I give all, away all that I have, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but I do not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Who is the truth? The truth is Jesus Christ. Love bears all things, believes all things. As we heard last week, it hopes all things. The hope is such a great thing that we have this time of year. It endures all things. Love never ends. Amen. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As those, those acts of worship, those things will cease. But true love never ends. Verse 9, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, when we stand before Jesus, the partial will pass away. 
When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now, I, I know in part, or excuse me, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. For now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. True love is the fact that Jesus knows us. He knows you this morning, personally. Every hair on your head, he knows you this morning. He knows the hurts that you're going through this morning. He knows the pain that you're having to deal with this morning. He knows you and he loves you because he knows you. So now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. True love is true worship and vice versa. You can't have one without the other. And so this morning, as we worship through God's word, it is only through recognizing and understanding that Jesus Christ is true love. That's how we can truly worship this morning. And so when we look at these three things that we've looked at over the last couple of weeks, faith, hope, and love. Faith is important because God has shown himself faithful by giving us his son. We, faith is important to this 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 aspect of love because we see God being faithful. Hope is important because it is the only true thing we can look to. The hope in Jesus Christ. We have the, the world has has seemingly no hope. They try to find hope in everything they can, but there's only one true thing that we can hope for and that's in Jesus Christ. But love, as Paul says, love is the greatest of these three things. And, and that's what we're going to look at today in a couple different places that Paul is writing in, a couple different churches he's writing to. I want you to see this. But understand this, that love is the greatest because love is the motivation. Love is the motivation that when God looked at his creation after it had sinned, after sin entered the picture, God looked at us in love and said, there's got to be a way. There's going to be a way for me to reconcile my people back to myself. For me to bring them back, there's going to be a way. And it's through that love. You see, God is infinite. God is, is, God, is God, okay? We, we don't understand God. We can't put him in a box. Paul talks about the mystery of God, the mystery of the gospel, because we can't understand it. But here's the deal. We do understand that God loved us and that even though we turned our back on him, even though the human race that he created turned their back on him, he still loved us enough to find a way, an unspeakable way to bring his people back. Second Corinthians 5 is, is, is where he talks about, Paul talks about this, excuse me, this ministry of reconciliation. And in verse 14, I want you to hear this in the next couple verses. If you've got a Bible, 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 14. If, if not, you can just you can come back through. You can come back. Let's do it again. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this. Check this out. That one has died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, Jesus, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for the sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the, the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God. Catch that. Catch what Paul's saying there. All this is from God who through Christ, just stop right there, just those words, who through Christ, think about it for a minute. What had to happen for this to happen, this ministry of reconciliation, it started somewhere when, when Christ came to earth. When love came down at Christmas, that's when this whole plan got put into motion. It's what the prophets were looking for in the Old Testament. The whole story of the Old Testament, just it begs for this. They're longing for this. They're looking for this. They're anticipating this. Hello, the Advent. Here we go. 
They're anticipating this. And Paul says this act of reconciliation, us being reconciled back to God, happened when, 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 and it all started, the culmination of all of this started when one act happened. When a spirit came to Mary, and, and there came Jesus. Down to earth, in human form, in the form of a fleshly baby boy that was born in a dirty, nasty stable. As humbly as he could, the king of the world has come. And why? It's this. All this from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ. Listen, in Christ. God was reconciling the world to himself. So when the act happened at Christmas, what we celebrate at Christmas, that was the, 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 the first part. That was it. That was the start of God saying, I am coming to bring my kids back home. I'm reconciling them back to myself. In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. He was bringing his children back. We're going to see this again here in just a second in Ephesians. If you got a Bible, flip over to Ephesians 1. Verse 3 is where we're going to start. I'm going to bounce around a little bit, but I'm letting Paul preach this morning because Paul, I can't do it any better than what Paul can because Paul, he's been preaching to me this week. Chapter 1, verse 3. It's good. I need to take a break. Mm. Amen. Come on. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. Now, this is what Paul's talking about to the church of Ephesus. He is, he's talking about spiritual blessing, but I want you to see where this stuff comes from. I want you to see where your spiritual blessing comes from. He says, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Even has he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him, okay? So now there's this idea of God chose us before him. God chose this idea. God chose this way before the foundations of the earth, okay? In love. This is big here. End of verse four, going into verse five. In love. He predestined us for the for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Think about that. He loved us in love. He went ahead and set up a way for us to be adopted back into the family as, as sons through Jesus Christ. Listen to me this morning. If you're listening to me within the sound of my voice or you're listening to it later or whatever, if you have Christ as your Lord and Savior, if through him you have come to know God the Father because of a relationship with Jesus Christ, because you've allowed the Holy Spirit to come into your, to your heart and take residence because you've accepted him and surrendered your life to be Lord and Savior. You have been adopted into a new family. You have been adopted as God's children. And he did this through the blood of Christ, which started, which happened there at Christmas. That's why this is so important. It ties everything together. Because we understand and we see that at Christmas, that is the true love that God showed us. I know we talk about it all the time, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Yes, but where did that start? You see, I understand that God's love was, was finished and, 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 and came to fruition on a cross and from a cross to an empty tomb. I know that, but we cannot forget that Christmas is not just some holiday that we celebrate. It is the culminate. It is. It is when when God said, "Here's my plan. I'm putting it into place." Imagine that years and years and years went went by in the Old Testament. We've got nothing happening for 400 years between Malachi and Matthew. Nothing's going on. 
and God's people are yearning for a solution. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. If you read the Old Testament, you can see it just gets worse and worse and worse for God's people. And they're waiting. They're waiting for a Messiah. That's what, that's what God has been telling them. That's what the prophets have been telling them. Somebody's coming. And after 400 years of silence, nothing happens. We don't get anything. Then all of a sudden, this miraculous birth happens. This miraculous birth comes to the scene. And not a lot of people applaud it. Not a lot of people are there to laud him as Savior. Not a lot of people are there to witness the birth of this little baby boy who is going to bring order to all of it as he sits at the right hand of the Father. They're looking for something completely different. And what God does is he says, I'm going to do this my way. And I'm going to bring love to this world in the form of a baby that is going to blow everybody's mind. But see, it's that moment that Jesus comes onto the scene that we realize how much God loves us. We realize the gift that he gave us in his son, Jesus. Let me keep going. In him, we have redemption through his blood. Again, he comes on the scene, but it's his blood that, that gives us the redemption, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. And our wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ. Understand that it all starts and ends with Jesus. As a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him, in Jesus, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Listen, when the king came down and, and he was killed and he rose from the dead and he came to this earth, when God sent his son to this earth to reclaim the power, and said, I have the power over this earth, over this dominion, over Satan, over the demons, over the spiritual realm and the earthly realm. When he said, I have the power, when we come to join him as followers of Christ, we gain an inheritance. And our inheritance has nothing to do with riches or gold, but our inheritance because of the baby that came down at Christmas, because of the gift that we first received at Christmas, we have a gift on the other side that when we stand before him, in heaven, he will look at us and not see trespasses and not see sin, but he will see a blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us. And we will receive an inheritance that is greater than anything that we could ever ask or imagine here on earth. We get to be with the Father for eternity. And that happened when love came down at Christmas. Let me keep going. I'm going to skip ahead to... Chapter 2, okay? Chapter 2 of Ephesians, verse 1, and we're almost done. And you were dead in, the tre in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. So, there was once a time where Satan ruled, the demonic spirits ruled, this, 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 this earthly council of demons ruled, and he's saying that all happened, but God, verse 4, I love it, but God, but God changed everything, verse 4, but God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love 
with which he loved us. Did you catch that? But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us. That great love is him sending his son. Even when we were dead, think about that. God sent his son to this earth, as Paul puts it, even though we were dead in our trespasses. Even though we had no thought to come back to him, we couldn't even come back to him. We had sinned and we were sent out and we were put away from this world. We were put out and yet Jesus comes to the earth. The love that comes down at Christmas come down to the earth. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love by which he loved us, even though we were dead in our trespasses, what does he do? He makes us alive in Christ. He takes the gift of that Christmas morning, that first Christmas in the manger, and he takes that gift and he imparts it on us through his son Jesus Christ dying on the cross, raising from the dead, and by that he gives us grace through which we are saved. Mm. And in verse 6, what's, what's this? Not only that, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. There's your inheritance right there. So that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Through faith that we talked about a couple weeks ago. The faith that where we sit, even though the, the sin entered the world, that we had to, by faith, understand and know that God was going to do something, that the Old Testament sat there in faith, waiting on God to bring a Messiah. And then we sit here in faith, knowing that we have faith in the Messiah that came to this earth, born of a virgin, and he came in, in, in the form of a baby in a manger, came and he rose up and he died on a cross and he defeated death, hell, and the grave and walked out of an empty tomb because we have that. We have faith in that. We can look ahead and know that one day we will spend eternity with him, whether we perish on this earth and we meet him in heaven or whether he comes to meet us in the sky and he comes to this earth to take back what's rightfully his. Either way, we have faith that we have salvation through him. Because of what he's done. By grace, you have been saved through faith. And it's not of your own doing. It is a gift from God. The gift that came down at Christmas. That first Christmas. The gift that we we praise and we, we glorify. The gift that we will, no doubt, on Christmas morning, if we understand truly what it's all about, we'll cherish on Christmas morning, the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Oh, amen. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before him that we should walk in him. Think about this. There's three things that I want you to see real quick and we're done. This is what God's love did through Paul talking about this in Ephesians. It did. He made us alive with Christ. Number one, God's love made us alive with Christ. When he became human flesh and he walked on this earth, we became alive in him when we chose to follow him. Number two, he raised us up with Christ. So not only have we been made alive, we've been given new glorious life through Jesus Christ. We have been made alive through Christ. Now we are seated with Christ, raised up with him. And the third thing, I got ahead of myself, seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So at some point in your life, if you're a follower of Christ this morning, you were once dead in your trespasses. But because of Christ, because of the Holy Spirit, you have become alive in Christ. And not only have you been given a new life, but you've been raised with him. Raised up with Christ to be seated in the heavenly realms as an adopted son 
or daughter into the kingdom of heaven. All of this happened because God loved you. All of this took place because when God looked down and saw the world was falling apart because of sin, he said, I got to do something. And he says, I love you so much that I can't leave you that way. I love you so much that I got to do something. And he chose to send his son to this earth. And so on Christmas morning, that's what we celebrate. God's love is celebrated that first Christmas. God's love is celebrated on Christmas because while we were still dead in sin, while we were yet sinners, Christ came to this earth and he died for us. You see, it all works together. Christmas, Easter, the Old Testament, the New Testament, it all comes together to point us to one thing, that God loved you so much that he gave his son for you in order that he may have a reconciled relationship with you. If you know him this morning, that's enough to praise. That's enough to, to jump out of your seat and worship this morning. But let me tell you, if you're listening to this this morning and you don't know Jesus and you don't have that relationship, then what are you waiting for? Jesus loves you and God loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. That's what Christmas is about. That's what it's all about. It's the greatest gift that could ever be given is that Jesus come for you that he loved you and he died on a cross. He defeated death, hell, and the grave and raised up so that you may have eternal life seated, as Paul tells us, in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. It's the most important gift that Christmas can give us. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for this message that you've given us this morning, God, this the love that came down at Christmas, Father. The love that, that you've given us, the love that, that we can't explain, that we don't understand, but we know is a love that loves us so much that you're willing to look past the fact that we were dead in our trespasses. And yet you loved us so that you were willing to die on a cross for us that you were willing to, to go to hell and defeat the devil in order to come back victorious, to take us home, for us to sit at the right hand, to sit with you at the right hand of the Father. Lord, we love you. We thank you for that gift. And now, God, if there's someone who doesn't know you, there's someone who's listening to this and they don't have that relationship, Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit would move right now. And if they would cry out to you, understanding that they need a relationship with you, that they need to know who you are, that they need to, to, to love you and to understand the love that you have for them and to accept the gift of salvation that you want to give them. Father, I thank you so much that you've given us a season. As crazy as it can be sometimes, as, as so much hustle and bustle as there can be sometimes, God, you've given us a season to remind us that you loved us so much that you were willing to send your son to die in our place. Father, we, we thank you. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for joining me this, this morning. Thank you, Miss Donna, uh, for, for being with us. Thank you for all of you that have continued to pray for our family. Um, continue to do that. Like I said, if there's prayer requests, send them through Facebook or email or text or however you can get them out. Uh, but just thank you guys so much for being with us. This has been so uh, such an amazing uh, time for me this morning um, just to be able to interact with some people and, and, uh, and share what God has laid on my heart as we've been cooped up in this house. Uh, but it doesn't matter where we are. 
uh, we have the, the free gift and the love of Jesus Christ uh, that is going to go with us. So thank you guys for watching again. Uh, just be watching this week uh, as I try to send out an email uh, sometime the next day or so uh, as we make a decision on whether or not we're going to open next Sunday or wait. Uh, I'm going to I'm I'm going to say wait just to be on the safe side, just to be cautious. Um, so again, thank you guys. Thanks, Wes, uh, for your message last week. Thank you for for handling uh, everything as we've been kind of both being back and forth and and being at home. And guys, I love you. Uh, I hope you have a great Christmas. If I don't see you before then, if I don't come on and, and, and wish you a happy Christmas before then, but have a Merry Christmas. And, uh, and, and, uh, and we, uh, we look forward to seeing you guys soon. Love you guys. Y'all have a great Sunday. Be blessed.